The DD214 Network podcast is for mature audiences only. Any videos, music, or entertainment not originating from the DD214 Network is used and covered under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, also known as Fair Use. Opinions expressed are our own and do not represent any DOD or U.S. government entities as a whole. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. You are no longer alone now because we have you. The button is not working. Ladies and gentlemen, soldiers and civilians, welcome to the DD214 Network, episode 127. We, you all know it's about as organized as a boot camp pillow fight and as predictable <laughs> as a surprising inspection. All right? Right. This ain't MEPS anymore. You're not bending over and spreading your ass cheeks for, for Dr. Hu, Hu Yang anymore. Right, boys? This is... <laughs> This is what's going on, all right? Look, it happened again, Jay. It happened again. What we happened? Were go- we were going to go see Bad Omens and Icy Stars. Uh, on the- wasn't that the one that got? Wasn't that the concert that like got messed up last time? And you tried to see it when you tried to see Bad Omen. Yeah, like you've already you've already had a bad this experience with them, now. right? This is oh twice god, now. I ha- really? This is, twi- this is twice now. I haven't been able to see them. <sighs> what happened? So first off, the tickets were one hundred and twenty-five dollars each. So okay. we, didn't, we didn't buy the tickets initially. So that was like, eh. okay, show happens. And they were supposed to play at Blue Ridge Rock Fest. Okay. And they played the day. They were supposed to play the day, the canceled day, that Sunday. They okay. ended up not playing. So it's already bad luck. They travel to New York. They get their shows done. There's no pop. There's audio issues. Give me a second. Uh-oh. Is there an interloper? Yeah, my, my my daughter just she just came in. She just woke up. I love you, baby. Uh, so the show happens. You can wave if you want. <laughs> oh shit! So the show so the show happens. There's no pop. There's audio issues, and one of the most like so bad omens. The singer is known for usually doing encores and bowing and giving respect to the crowd apparently he didn't do that and the last thing he said before leaving and there was and there was like seven fights too uh he said he you, at a concert said, yeah first and, and we I, we talked about this on an episode of cleaning friends which is coming out this week where concert culture in new york depends on the venue that you go to does that make sense it, it, it actually yes it, it makes very much so makes sense yeah. but that's it's also 2023, and like getting into fist fights at concerts is like kind of like a 90s thing to me. If, yeah, I agree. And yeah. so it's like, have you ever like seen a car drive by and it's got like three bullet holes in the side, and you're like, dude, that's so fucking 90s. Like, yeah. get, get the fuck out of here, you fucking trash, dude. Like, come the yeah. fuck on. And We're so, better than that. And, and so the show happened. He walks out the stage and he says, Damn, New York, I thought you were cool. And I'm just like, God damn. You know, Oops. like, if you're from big, if you're from a big city, New York, Kansas City, LA, and like a band says that to you, and you know that your town is better than that, that hurts, dude. That's like you uh, to to kind of like give give you an equal you know representation. Like Kansas City prides itself on our fans being classy. So when our fans are not cla- when our fans are not classy, like the whole city 
like gets pissed off about it. I mean, like everyone gets, cause like we've had such a good reputation over the years. And now that like some of our fans are getting a little wild and, you know, football fans are going to be football fans, but it's like, yeah, when we're not classy, everyone feels like it's, it, it hurts our soul. It hurts our, it hurts our Midwestern souls to think, to think that people judge us. Right. Cause that's what Midwestern yeah. people worry about. They worry about the judgment. Right. And like, so yeah, like, so to, to have a, a band say New York is not, especially I'm assuming this is New York city, right? Yep. So it's not even New York state. He's saying New York city. Yeah. I thought you were fucking cool. Like that's got a sting. That's got a fucking sting. It's, like it's not. Ooh, nice. yeah. ooh. Okay. it's Big not. Oof. Oh man. So what a week. Um, Oh my God! What a week! Yeah, definitely. What a week! So what, yeah, what was this lady's name again? Oh, fucking Lauren Bovert, dude. Congress District Three, Congresswoman out of Colorado. Okay, it should come as fucking no surprise to anyone that this lady is up up Trump's ass, fucking about as far as she can get her fucking head. Okay, she was one of the Congress people fucking giving people tours on January fifth. You know, the day before fucking January sixth. Okay, she claims to be a very devout Christian. Okay, <laughs> she's she claims she claims to be all about family values. Okay, I'm like this is all part of the public record. I mean, this is this is what she platformed on. You know, family values, devout Christianity, guns. She's all about guns. Like this lady loves fucking wearing a gun on her hip in public. Fucking whatever. Well, this week at a fucking off-Broadway performance of Beetlejuice in Denver, Colorado. By I the way, this off Broadway, all right. By the way, this off-Broadway performance of Beetlejuice, according to like the uh, the theater, is is it's the uh, the 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 plays it, the play is has an equivalent rating of basically PG. So kids were present in this theater. Children. Apparently, this congresswoman was vaping. Uh, there was a pregnant woman. Uh, who complained to her and she told the pregnant woman like basically like to mind her own business and that she lived a sad and pathetic life. Okay. Uh, they got kicked out. They eventually got kicked out. This is a congresswoman, by the way, a sitting mm -hmm. member of the U S house of representatives. Okay. Congresswoman got kicked out with her date. She was shown on video, giving the finger to the security guards. She was, she's known to have said, do you know who I am? And I know the mayor. Like as if that fucking means a goddamn thing when like nobody gives a fuck who you are, lady. When you're committing a crime, bro. Hey, dude. Like real recognize real, and real also recognize fucking trash, dude. And like I don't give a fuck if you're the guy. I don't give a fuck if you're the king of England, dude. Like if you're trashy, like I'm kicking your ass out, dude. Like the, the whole fuck fucking thing is, what's the mayor gonna do? This That's theater is it never, fucking is it doesn't belong to the city? Pro more than likely not. It's I've, a private theater doing a fucking private event for an off-Broadway show. You want to know the mayor can't do shit about it. On top of that, what's the mayor gonna do when you just made yourself look like a fucking asshole? It's not gonna make him look bad. Like dude, you know who I blame for this whole thing? The whole name dropping thing? Fucking California, dude. All right. That shit Ooh. started like Californians love to name drop, especially motherfuckers out of LA. Everybody in LA You're thinks right. dropping so many names. Beverly Hills, those areas of I, fucking they, California. I grew Do you up. Do know around, who my dad is? Do you know who my uncle is? You I know, grew. I just, grew up in Arizona with the trickle down from that bullshit, dude. It's like nobody gives a fuck who you know, who you are, where you're from, where the fuck are you at right now? Because I we're talking, not fucking your daddy's uncle's cousin's butt fuck yeah. boyfriend, like whatever. Like we don't care. Like you're here now. And so, like, they got kicked out. She's giving the finger to security, drop, trying to name drop, whatever, talking shit. Well, then fucking yesterday or about a day and a half ago, they released more film from inside the theater where she is clearly shown vaping, clearly shown fucking telling this pregnant lady who was sitting actually behind her to fuck off, basically. Her fucking date had hands all over her freaking sweater puppies, and she was shown giving him a little bit of uh, over-the-pants handy, Okay. Again, U.S. Congresswoman performing sec sex acts in public, vaping, and telling pregnant people to fuck off. Like, this literally happened this week. Like, I don't know what extra-dimensional being is, like, fucking with our timeline or just, like, yeah. 
Like it, it, this is so fucking weird, dude. It like it's weird, man. Like who? You're 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 in the public eye. Okay, people don't like bro, you already, bro. Like, and I feel, and I, and, and and this is the part where I don't want to sound hypocritical. I really can't say that I in over the cor- entire course of my life that I have never performed a sex act in public, right? Like, I I may or may not be very guilty of that, like in the past, right? Here's what I don't do. Here's what I don't do. I'm guilty of it. Here's what I don't do when I have sex acts in public. You know what I mean? I don't claim to be a fucking devout Christian. I don't claim to be all about family values. And I'm definitely not a fucking sitting member of goddamn Congress, dude. Come on. Like, what the yeah. fuck? I don't, I don't tell security guards to go fuck off. I don't blow vape smoke into pregnant ladies' faces. Okay? Like, oh, by the way, John, did you see who, who her fucking date was? Yeah, so I think... So I, it's kind of weird because like I don't know if that's like drawing the line of if we. It's talk not. About, this is okay. all, dude. This it's all in public now, dude. Like it's it's been released. Like this has all been released. Give me a second. I'll uh, I'll I'll read uh, I'll read uh, what her. Uh, according to the Daily Mail, and this this has been confirmed actually. So it's not just the Daily Mail that's reporting it. Her her date. This this man this man was her, her date. Co owns. The Hooch Craft Cocktail Bar in Aspen, Colorado, which has hosted multiple LGBTQ plus events. As Midas Touch Network notes, the bar hosted a Winter Wonderland burlesque and drag show in January, as well as multiple events for Aspen Gay Ski Week over the years. I have a question. What is her stance in that that area? She's anti. Anti. She's, she's, this is her. This is her just being a complete fucking hypocrite on like as many levels. Oh, by the way, the ink on her. She's not officially divorced yet either. She's oh, she's better in trouble. She she's going through divorce right now. She's going through divorce. Okay, but she is not officially divorced yet. So she is technically still married too. Can I, can this I is all like. Off, can I piggyback off this real quick? Because please, Laura just, just made made into law that alimony is like. A no go. If you are caught in if in in Florida now, and I'm, I'm I'm almost certain that this is in other states too. If you are caught cheating or having an affair or stepping out of your marriage, you don't get alimony. It depends on the state, but that that can't no. possibly be a thing. North if Carolina has it. Also, if you're considered to be an alienation of affection, yeah, where if, pretty much if you're considered if, at fault, if you're at fault in the divorce, if you're considered yeah. at fault in the divorce, like your alimony goes out the fucking window. So, so we're not lawyers. So, we're not so, lawyers. But in North Carolina, in North Carolina, the way it works is even if you've already started the separation process, mm-hmm. if you start dating within that one year for the separation process, Which I don't agree with with alienation of affection. And then you're no longer allowed to get alimony. That's barbaric, actually. Like I, the, your, I, your, 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 your state forces people to separate for a year before they're allowed to get divorced. And it's also trying to force them to like not get their freaking noodles wet. That's like, torture. yeah, that's bullshit. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel bad for North Carolina. I didn't say I agreed with it. I was no, just no, 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 I, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so question, we're not lawyers, right? But where would this fall? Like, what's the, co- I have to look this up. Uh, She's just being a dipshit in public. I mean, it fall, it fall, it, here's what it falls under. It falls under the fucking, the, the column of fucking just extreme bad taste. This woman is a fucking dumbass, dude. Like, let me put it to you this way. You remember how I was a I was a member of the the VFW out in Colorado, right? Mm-hmm. We lived in I lived in her district. When I lived in Pueblo, Colorado, that's part of her district. This fucking this fucking bitch sent a bunch of her little boob heads to one of our. We had an event for Vietnam veterans. It was it was it was National like Vietnam Veterans Day. We had an event. She sent a bunch of her boob heads to try to like get time to talk. While the event was already going, they didn't they didn't fucking contact us before the event. They just showed up. Okay. And they wanted to talk about the USS Pueblo, which was captured by North Korea during the Korean War. And is like the only fucking US Navy vessel, like still considered captured, basically, right? Yeah. It's like, you dumb motherfucker, it's Vietnam Veterans Day. And you want to talk about some Korean War shit? Shut the fuck up, you stupid bitch. This is one like, of the this is one of the craziest things we've ever heard, and also to, she's to, a fucking to, idiot. She's a and fucking also to moron. Add in, adulter, adultery will not affect alimony agreement in any way in Colorado. However, 
and the affair could impact property division if the affair breached a prenuptial agreement or added debts to the marriage in the state of Colorado. Mm -hmm. So she, she, she's depending, deep, she's such yeah, a fucking idiot. She's such yeah, a fucking it's, moron. I've never, it, it, it's been rare in my life to ever see people that are just that amazingly stupid that fail that far upward yeah. and continue and continue to fail while they get like after they're there on I top mean, of she, that oh. I, I think we could all agree that this is also an offense since they have evidence it's a criminal offense and she could possibly get a chomo die reminder children were in the audience yeah oh, guess what she's doing next week she was invited to a fucking a youth conference in texas that she's been to before a youth faith conference faith conference john for the youth last year when she was there she wore a gun on her hip oh, this broad is this broad is so classless dude like it it, it really like it it, it, well, I mean, it, it, it is it, texas like i'm pretty sure a lot of people were wearing guns on their hips even at a youth conference that's it's just it's it's so like i i don't understand what like the the the, the levels of projection protect the levels of, the levels of projection children. yeah no, i i just don't i don't i could never how can you lie to yourself so bad that you turn out like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't care where you come from, like oh, yeah. where you've been, but how do you lie to yourself? Like, and, and, and how do you play a hypocrite in real life? That like, like that, that badly. She fucked up on so many levels during this little fucking, you know, excursion of hers this week that it's like the, the, the stupid bitch didn't even have any credibility to begin with. It's like, really whatever, whatever she had is completely gone. Probably within her own base. Yeah, I, mean, I, I hope to see uh, Congresswoman Bobert. Um, I hope to see her criminally charged because at the end of the day, if you really think about it, what she did. I, I remember in the in the eighties, like motherfuckers resigned over shit like this, and now it's just, yeah, we got we got a congresswoman on video getting her freaking getting her hooters fucking grabbed and giving yeah. somebody an over the pants handy while blowing fucking vape smoke in a pregnant woman's face with children in the fucking audience, and she's still gonna keep her fucking job. Like yeah. aren't, aren't 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 the Republicans the ones that fucking are all about like anti you know that they, they hate pedos and you know like they all want they want to find like all the the child slavery rings and like all this that's them right that those, they're, they're the ones. yeah I think it's the Republicans but it's totally okay to give a handy in a fucking audience fucking yeah, with, with with children with fucking present, right? present. Jesus yeah, so right so still so she did talk about the the groping video said that she has fallen short of her values. <laughs> Fallen shorts of her values, my ass. What do you mean fallen? What do you mean fallen short? That's like a that's like a cliff of the Grand Canyon. You fell into, bitch. Like, what do you mean fallen short? That's not fallen. That's like you like what val what values did you have? If I do I shit, say that's God, not even that's it, not dude. even like a cliff at the Grand Canyon. That's like your values were just straight up kicked out of the fucking International Space Station, bro. Like, no, what was that dude? That, that dude, uh, that Red Bull. He like jumped from fucking space. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's yeah. like that's what she jumped. Like that's how far she fucking fell short, dude. That, that's like that is funny, bro, bro. I am the, I am the last person in the world that will ever judge you or anyone you know for doing your thing, right? But in the process of doing your thing, if you're gonna claim to be doing like X, Y, and Z, like over here, also, that's where I will judge you. I will judge you handily and heavily for that, and probably never trust you ever in your life again right that's that's my value system right you trusted after that i dude i can i can forget and forgive i i've i've done plenty of fucking stuff in my life i'm 42 years old i've been around the block a few times i will never judge somebody i will never judge somebody for so 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 called falling short but dude like like if you're if you're like claiming to be all about like family values and you're this devout fucking christian blah 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 jesus fucking christ dude like no, dude. No. Oh, and you're and you're in con you're getting paid. Like our tax our tax money is yeah, paying for that. Like, our our tax money paid for that fucking show. Like that's what our tax money is going to on that side right now. So great uh, job, asshole. Great fucking so we, job. We had an uh, we had what, what was next? Apple, an Apple event we had? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, Joe. Yeah, I think we were, Joe. Yeah, we were gonna yeah. we were kind of gonna go into a little bit of uh, advancement of we're going into Techtober. You know, we kind of slightly touched on at the end of last episode. Yep. Um, usually this time of year is always the beginning of it. Apple, you know, 
what was it two three months ago it was back in back in june apple did their worldwide developers conference where they you know get all the software engineers and developers together and say hey here's our new operating systems go ahead and start you know optimizing your shit for our operating systems september end of august beginning of september apple always announces the new phones watches um phones and watches primarily on and off throughout the year they'll do um they'll do like bits and pieces for like announcements and presentations for new Macs, new iPads, stuff like that. But always this time of year is when we get new phones, new watches, that side of the tech stuff. So on Tuesday, Apple announced three new products, uh, the Apple Watch Series 9, the Apple Watch Ultra 2, and then the new iPhone 15 lineup. So... Part of what Apple's doing now is they've made this pledge to go carbon neutral by the year 2030. Um, Starting with the Apple Watches. So pretty much what Apple's done at this point is they've gotten their production down to where with the Apple Watches, as long as you purchase, well, it's it's going to be extremely hard to do. Yes. It's not. It's not. We can say that out loud. It's it's our show. Like, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so right now they've got, at least with the Apple Watch Series 9 and the Ultra 2, as long as you purchase the Apple Watches with their cloth material bands, not the silicone bands or anything like that, the watches are 100% carbon neutral. So everything's recycled material. There's, you know, with the way they do their manufacturing or whatnot. So they claim, and on paper, that's what they say fucking i'm not an environmentalist i can't say it's true or not so that's all I, there is to it i typically stick to the, um, uh, the philosophy that just corporations lie so <laughs> i got i mean we'll believe it when we see it how about that you know what i mean like oh yeah we'll, we'll see but they, they got they got to pull, pull a couple of manufacturing facilities out of china and shit before they fucking go carbon neutral i'm pretty sure <laughs> so I'll go ahead and say like the, the bigger, the, out of all the devices they announced at the, at, at this week's uh wonderlust event is what they called it. Yeah, the, which, I thought, which I thought was super weird, by the way, the ultra two was probably the most underwhelming device for me. And that's just because I already have the original ultra from last year. And the ultra two really doesn't have much, more improvements from the ultra that i have now with the iphones so with the 14s and the 14 pros the 14 still had that horrible notch and then the pros got what they called the dynamic island this year they're bringing in the dynamic island to the base model phones the cheaper phones now um, it's a cool little feature. I like the the overall, like the way it interacts with it, the whole interface. Um, the big change for for anything that was announced, even between the 15 and 15 pros, finally, no more proprietary fucking charging cables. Now you just, as long as you've got a USB-C cable laying around, you can charge your fucking device and you don't have to worry about it. And honestly, it's so much cheaper to buy USB-C cables than it is to buy fucking lightning cables. Buy these proprietary cables. Another thing Apple's doing, and it kind of annoys me because I'm a big, I'm a big user of their leather cases for their phones because I... I've got, you know, I've I've used many different phone cases over the years, otter boxes, fucking all that shit, silicone cases, the leather cases for me, I prefer because when like trying to take my phone in and out of my pocket, the leather doesn't stick. Ah. And wow. now Apple's getting rid of their leather cases and they've made this new material they're calling uh what is it? Uh fine woven. So it's a cloth like material instead of leather 
with them trying to go this carbon neutral route. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of on board with you. I also prefer the coverings of my products to be made out of dead animals. Interesting. Exactly. Like for me, I mean, I love my dead animal case. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like for me, I'm a bit different. I like going for a more durable waterproof style. Cause I, you know, I like I'm going into pools dead. and stuff like that. So for me, yeah. but, but my style, I don't put my phone in my pocket. See, I'm a guy that likes having stuff hanging off of me. So my fanny, my fanny pack, my military fanny the pack. Only thing hanging of, off of me. You know, that, that's right. All 12 inches, baby. So, <laughs> you know, I carry mine in a, in a fucking band. So I always have mine attached to my hand or attached to like hanging off my bag or my pants or something. But I never have this in my pocket. Mm-hmm. Uh, sim- mostly now, the simple fact because my chiropractor said to stop putting it in my pocket. So now, one thing I will say that I do like with what they did because they switched over to USB C for the phones. I can now take a USB C cable from the 15 Pro Max when I get it next Friday because I already fucking pre ordered because that's just what I am. But also, me being the tech person in all of the circles, I always order the products to test them out before anybody else does. Um, that's kind of just my role in life at this point. <laughs> I am too. Uh, you can put me so, in there too, Jay. So so one thing that I do say with the USB-C, so there's, there's a few different functions it can add in. So A, if I want to just mirror my phone to a TV, I no longer have to do it wirelessly. I can just plug a USB-C to HDMI cable into my phone and it'll just put my display on the TV. Or if we're out and about and say Jay's phone, like we're out having a group of it and Jay's phone's about to die. We can charge Jay's phone from my phone. That part I do think is pretty cool. I do think that part is pretty cool. Like being able to charge another phone phone. from... Charging a phone from a phone, I do think that's a that is definitely a convenient feature. Like it's that that one is hard to deny. That one is kind of yeah. like, how come you haven't been able to do that like up to this point? Do you know what I mean? Like that's that's a good one. I do like that now, one. Now, one thing I will say that I do like with the 15 Pro Mat Pro line is they changed the casing. So the iPhones for years have been aluminum around the edges and then glass and glass on the back and front for the pros this year they switched over to titanium and with the titanium i feel that's actually pretty nice because for instance i've had every apple watch since the first generation and Every time within the year of owning it from when it comes out to the next one that comes out, my Apple Watch, the casing on it, because it's aluminum, gets dinged up, it's all fucked up, I end up having to buy a new one. This is the first year in almost 10 years of owning an Apple Watch now, I don't have to replace my watch because the titanium casing and the new glass they're using is a lot more durable. And they're resistant. Using a, they're using a ceramic casing too, which is really cool. I wonder how much slave labor had to go into that uh, in China before it got to you guys. And then the the other cool thing, and go, God, so I'm sorry, dude. What do you want me to say? I'm sorry. I know you're into it. You're, you're the tech guy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It. it I. No filter. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm no. sorry. You, you no. add your comedic fucking presence in there, Jay, because that's exactly what the fuck it is. Um, but we're, we're like getting ready to talk about like the auto workers going on and strike and shit, and like this is like this is how your shit got made, by the way. Like, yeah. <laughs> but the other cool thing, so with the Pro Maxes, so iPhones, everybody that owns one knows it's always had this little toggle switch on the side to mute or silent your phone notifications. Now they're taking the action button from the Apple Watch Ultras, which is just a little button right here that you can program to do different things. Mine, I have it set to turn on a flashlight. Granted, it's locked now, so it won't turn on. Um, they're, They're adding that to the pro models of the iPhones to where you can actually program it for other functions instead of just having it silence your phone now you can have it do 
everything from open the camera to take a quick note to turn on the flashlight. Like that's, that's pretty neat because I feel like customization is something that people need with their devices, especially something you've got on your body at all times. And having that option to just pull your phone out your pocket, press the button on the side to like turn the flashlight on if you need it. Cause you're in the dark somewhere and the power's out. That's nifty. Instead of having to go through fucking settings to turn on a goddamn flashlight. Sure. Sure. Uh, again, however, it's Apple. This event was very lackluster. They called it Wonderlust, and it was a very lackluster fucking event. There was no lust. And then well, somebody... there, was in Den- there was in Denver, Colorado with a certain U.S. congresswoman. <laughs> and then somebody at Apple had the gr- had this great idea. Hey, you know, we're talking about going carbon neutral. Let's do a whole fucking video skit with Mother Nature. Oh, God. Was this predictably bad? I'm assuming. <laughs> it was, it's it's being talked about. It, it it sounds like. Let me just put it this: like, I it was just, a solid five minutes of my life. I'm never going to get back. And I watched a two and a half hour fucking presentation on iPhones and Apple watches. So you know, my dedication to tech is whole a, a whole nother fucking level. But there was five minutes in that whole two and a half hours that I wish I could get back. Bro, like I. It, it it baffles my mind. It strips my consciousness bare that there are people that sit in these fucking rooms that probably make multiple times my yearly salary at its highest ever, right? Which I don't make I don't make my highest salary ever right now, but multiple times my highest salary ever. They sit in these fucking rooms and they think these I they think these are good ideas. They think these are ideas that will resonate with people. And it's like, how fucking tone deaf, how fucking like, how fucking separated are you from like the the, the boots on the ground? You know, it's like being in the army when like some fucking sergeant major or a BC or God forbid, like a colonel or a fucking division general. You know what I mean? Where it's like when they come down with some of these fucking wild ideas and you're like, what the actual fuck are you thinking? Like, that's stupid. That's the dumbest shit. And I'm not saying some of these people don't have some good ideas sometimes that is what they make the money for right in theory in theory a five minute video were produced and made by apple by the way the the, the fucking company apple of all companies putting on a thing about how they're all about mother earth no the fuck you're not you never have been okay like (laughs) god damn it it was never about that all right y'all started with a good idea fucking the sith the sith fucking took over Okay, and now you're just like shoving fucking like a different version of fucking FIFA, FIFA soccer and fucking uh, goddamn like goddamn uh, Call of Duty up our asses every fucking year. Well, that's it. So, like, so, like, that's what you're doing. Seeing as, seeing as you mentioned games, though, here's <laughs> another one. Guess what's f- getting released on iPhones this year? Oh, God. They're going to start releasing AAA games. Like, oh, yeah. On a phone? Capcom. Capcom's releasing the remake for Resident Evil 4 okay. on iPhones. Uh, Resident Evil Village, the very last Resident Evil game, is coming to iPhones. Okay. The new Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed Mirage, is getting a mobile release of the full-fledged fucking game that you can play on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation. <sighs> Very. So, Apple's touting that with their A17 Pro chip that's going into the new iPhone 15s, that because it's got a six-core GPU in the phone, it can run these AAA titles. And there's development studios, game developers that are working with Apple to make the games run on your fucking phone. I wonder if someday you could use a phone as like the motherboard for a fucking PC. People are already doing it. That's what I'm like. That's kind of where I was like. Here's I'm like, thing. here's my. If you thing, can do right? if you can do that with a AAA game title, you can basically use your phone as the as the PC, right? In so, in theory, is that in correct? Theory, yes. In theory. In theory. In theory. Let me put it this way. So my Mac Mini, what I use for my podcasting and video editing, mm-hmm. uses a proprietary um, 
chipset that Apple makes in house, just like their phones, just like their iPads, right. just like the watches. Apple's brought everything back in house, switched away from using third party manufacturers for their for their uh, for their processors and graphics cards. Um, when I say third parties, I'm talking like Intel, AMD. I'm not talking like some Chinese manufacturing facility in the Wu Tang province. <laughs> I'm. But so with the iPads now, the the way what Apple's done with the iPads, with the uh, iPad Airs and the iPad Pros is the same processor and socket that's running my desktop Apple computer runs the iPads. So it's very possible because they've switched over to. Ooh. What happened, Joe? You just blacked out for a second. Oh, the the, the I was reading what Frenchie said, and it just for a second there didn't make sense until she it's came back. Over. And said Sith. Yeah. Sith takeover. Um, but like they it, it's it's a hundred percent possible. I I mean you can there's people out there that don't own a computer anymore because they have this in their pocket. I, I believe it. I, I totally believe like, that. I mean, I if if, if, if I did ever do Go ahead. Go ahead. If I didn't do content creation and podcasting and stuff, the only computer I would have in my possession would be for work. A hundred percent, just a How work. Boring computer. Is, How boring I wouldn't is have. That? I mean, but, put it this way: if if I I have an older model Samsung, and it's it's considered older at this point, right? It's not old, old, yeah. but it's considered older. If I did more. And actually use the features that my phone is capable of, I would probably be in a similar boat if I actually well, cared. If I actually and, and, and my phone's older, well, and that's, it's older. That's the thing. So, like Samsung, Samsung with their phones has what they call Samsung Gex, which allows you to take a USB C cable, plug your phone into a display, connect a wireless keyboard and mouse, yep, and use your phone as a fucking computer, as yep. a desktop PC. Yep. Or a laptop in a sense. So, yeah. you know, it, the thing is, the technology's there. We're already at that stage. It's just the, PC, we... the PC master race, the side of us that uses desktop Windows computers. Which there's nothing wrong where, with. Which there's nothing wrong with. That's where, and, and the PC gamers, that's where it's keeping us more at not running whole computers off of the same board that's in a phone. Sure. Because for to run the games and stuff, you're needing a little bit more power. You're needing a little bit more graphics processing. There's a lot of finite details in what you need for that. Now, if you're just browsing the web and watching YouTube videos, you don't need all that shit. That's right. He's right. Uh, while we're talking about gaming, do you want to transition into GTA? Might as well. But can, Might I, as well. can, I, but can I have a request? Of course. Yeah. A request. We have talked so much shit about GTA and uh -huh. all the bad stuff. Can we talk about the good stuff about it? And, and yeah. because we know what the bad stuff is. good. Is. Yeah. We we know we know we've, we've talked about the bad for yeah. the for the last three fucking years. So yeah, yes. We, yeah, we know yeah. we know we know the game, we know GTA six isn't coming out. We know we know we're not gonna get a trailer. We know we're not gonna get jack shit. We, we're, we're not just, gonna get we're not gonna get any DLC. So, <laughs> you know, like so let's push past that for sure, a second. Sure. And <laughs> let's talk about all the juice that was squeezed out of the orange. <laughs> it absolutely and oh by the way for our audience uh out of the fucking orange that fucking orange has been bone dry for the last five years yeah i was <laughs> for for our listening audience uh today like as of our our podcast which is live right now if you're, if you're listening okay. later yeah. as of today um <laughs> today is the 10th anniversary of the release of gta 5 i remember me and a uh, friend of the show chris bodette we were in line at midnight at Fort Leonard Wood, at the at the uh, the GameStop, I think I think we had a GameStop on Fort Leonard Wood, and we were in line there at midnight. I I still have the special edition box somewhere in my fucking basement over here. Like I got the special edition. This is for the fucking Xbox 360. For the 360, okay. This was ten years ago. 
Okay. Like that's like, I was, uh, I was about two, no, about a month. Sorry. I was about a month. I was about a month from fucking going back to selection for the second time. And yeah, like I ever, I remember this all like vividly, like, and it was not that long ago for me, but to see this game still being milked 10 years down the, down the line, that does say something, John, for the game. That it, does it say just, something. It says to, what says the only thing that I see, I mean, there's two sides of it. You have people that really, really, really enjoy the game, right? Yes. And, and then that's you have, got and a then, very strong backing. Yeah, so it's a community. Yes. And then you have the other side who play because they have nothing else to play and they're angry and they take it out on everybody in the game and it ruins the experience. You know, that that that's another thing too. You yeah. know, uh I it, it's but but I like to look on the positive side of things when it comes to community because the commute the community the co listen the console community is fucking savage and the pc community on gta online because we're not even going to talk about rp because rp yeah, that's, a know, other, we, that's a whole yeah, other yeah we know I that can't tell you how many times in gta online i've spawned in and then just boom i'm dead yeah yeah i mean but have you ever played gta if that never happened to you you know what I mean? You know, you have it done. You have it done 10 times. We had this guy that we used to play with. We'll call him Boost, right? We'll call him No Boost. And we used and he played GTA with uh with with our old friend Joe Parazzi, right? And me and Joe Parazzi, we beat the shit out of him and blew up all his cars and he started like legitimately crying. Like le like legitimately crying. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. And it just goes to show, you know, that's the other side. Um, I think, you know, GTA, GTA Online is a fucking mess. I'm not even going to sugarcoat that. It's a, fun. It was it, fun. I can't even get mad at GTA 5. What I Ultimately, a lot of my negative opinions are going to always circle back to the developer. It's, gonna be rock, it's on Rockstar. Uh, this was not on. Online. No, I agree with Squilini as well online, G, too. Yeah, G, G, GTA 5 is a masterpiece as a game. It is. I am not surprised that people still like playing it and enjoy playing it ten years later. That is not a surprise to me. It is a great fucking game. And if you and if you're playing it with some homies online, it can be a lot of great fun. You know what I mean? Like I mean yeah. seriously. Like there, there's there's a, a multitude of ways to enjoy this game, and it is a great game. It is a testament to what happens when people like actually give a fuck. You know, develop developing some of these titles, and they put their 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 souls in, into the product. You know, you know, something interesting, too. I so my wife and I are 15 years next Monday together. Uh -huh. Right. 15. Congratulations, dude. Did you say 15 years, dude. Yeah, we're going to be 15 years next Monday. And I remember like when we first when we were first together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When we were first together, I was playing GTA four and GTA five was just. It right was about to come out. You know, the, it was just in development because it came out uh, 2013. Yeah. So it was in development. And then I, you know, went into the army, played a shit ton of GTA 4. And then while in the army, um, actually, while I was in. Uh, so that's 2013. I was I was in Fort Benning already. So I was already in Fort Benning, uh, established thing because I got there in March. So we were playing GTA Five. But I remember I bought GTA. Actually, I we had just moved, and I had bought GTA for the 360. Yeah. And then the, and then the Xbox One came out around that time, so I had I bought the Xbox One version yep. for it. And now mm -hmm. we're in the next gen, and it has subscriptions and stuff like that. I mean, look, good on them. They made a lot of money. They're going to make a trillion more. Yeah. Whenever, whenever this thing comes out next, well, I'm still, I'm still and, playing Red Dead too. So yeah. I will I will say, however, so you know GTA Five as of today is now officially ten years old. Yeah, we're a little oh, shy really? of two months out from another game having a big birthday, which is which Skyrim. Which okay, oh, there you go. Oh, well, twelve years on November 11th. Okay, yeah, and people are still playing the fuck out of that game. Can we talk you know? about that? Mm -hmm. Can we talk about that real quick? Because like Skyrim was, uh, you know, I was already in. Uh, you guys know I'm a. I I was playing Bethesda games. I was just into, 
uh, the Fallout series. And my first taste of like the Elder Scrolls world was with Skyrim. And it was it was a buddy of mine that that and I actually remember it was someone in the defect who brought it up to me, uh, Sergeant Winters. And he would talk about this game. He was just like, oh, yeah. He goes, if you like Fallout, you'll like Skyrim. And, I, you know, I started off Skyrim. And Skyrim itself is, is, I mean, shit, how many Game of the Year editions did they come out with? You know? I couldn't, couldn't even they released a Game of the Year edition for Skyrim on every fucking platform they've released it on. And, and they made a lot of money with it, too. <laughs> and let's put it this way. The Switch came out in 2017. Yeah. And one of the launch titles on the Switch was fucking Skyrim. There you go. Terry, that that's a testament, when, testament to a good game. Bye. When the original PlayStation VR came out for the PS4, one of the launch titles for that was Skyrim in VR. Like it's, but at the same time, here's the thing: I'm one of those people. I've played Skyrim on every platform except PlayStation VR because I it's enjoyed the game that much, and it's one of those games I can keep going back to. I could even know I was there because I played Fallout 4 in VR. And even though it's like cool to be in the environment and to look around, uh, it's cut it, it's a little immersive breaking one and two once the bat once the battery goes it's so, just like, shit. It's not the same. So I've uh, I've played Skyrim in VR on PC. Um and I will say the experience with it in VR is a whole nother level um, because, you know, the opening sequence of Skyrim just once that dragon fucking flies in when you're in VR. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> like, I about shit like in your pants. Yeah, because it it's almost realistic, especially if you've modded the game to have the the environment look more realistic yeah, than shaders and stuff like that. Um, but no, it's, it's, you know, like GTA five, a lot of people keep going back to it. Hence why it's lasted for 10 years now. Yeah. It's, Same almost, reason almost like the, Skyrim. it's almost like the gaming industry, like fucking shit itself and like landed in the toilet and people are playing decade old games because everything being released lately is dog shit. Just fucking but, utter dog shit. That's the thing. So like Bethesda, what was it like? Five years ago, Bethesda announced the next Elder Scrolls game. They never announced the title for it. We got a little trailer so at like a fucking Xbox showcase for Elder Scrolls 6. And that was like five years ago. And that's it. Kind of like how we know, you know, GTA 6 is supposed to be coming, which it fucking probably won't ever come because Rockstar just keeps milking the tit of fucking <laughs> GTA 5. <laughs> So, you know, it it's it's one of those things like yes, those games are old. However, for the communities that back those games, yeah, they've aged well, very much so. And people keep fucking playing them. They're still I mean, in a lot of ways it's still relevant. I mean, you you got to admit, like for a game that came out in 2013 with all the utter insanity that has gone on in the world in the last 10 years, GTA 5 is very much still a relevant game. You know what I mean? Like very, very much the 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 parody, yeah. the parodies. You know the the storylines. Everything is it's very much. It, yep. They could release it tomorrow, and it would still ring just as true. So that yep. that much yep. that much I have to give Rockstar. Like when they when they when they bust out the GTA gloves, dude. Like they don't fuck around. So yeah. So all right. So next thing, real quick. Um, this will be like a three minute thing. Ahsoka. Oh, you're fine. What did you What did you think of Ahsoka? So with with this episode, it definitely was like I said, this episode was going to be the make or break of the series, and I feel like it made it. Um, for me at least. Yeah. Um, so episode four ended. We saw fucking Ahsoka in whatever fucking Temple. alternate dimension bullshit she was in. Um, and Anakin just pops up. I was wondering when you were gonna show up, snips, and then the entire, like, a good chunk of this episode was flashbacks to the Clone Wars. Like, we got live-action Clone Wars footage for fucking once. Whole new scenes and everything. All the lines that Christensen did for that 
brand new, never before recorded by him. Um, the fight sequence, the way they kind of backtracked and we got younger Asona at the beginning of the Clone Wars. And then, you know, eventually she's fighting Anakin as Vader, but before he got all burnt by, you know, Obi-Wan having the high ground and shit. Uh, <laughs> it was the, the fight sequences, though, like the lightsaber duels that they did in this show so far. Both really good. Ahsoka and Balin and now fucking the Anakin and fucking Ahsoka duels were freaking amazing. Um... But it was nice to see some like live action snippets from the Clone Wars cartoon because all those flashbacks and stuff were actual parts of the cartoon series, the, the series when the cartoon was on. They just redid it in live action. Yeah, it was it, it was really good. I enjoyed it. It was very cinematic, very exciting. Um, I didn't start getting my, you know, the I, I was just sitting there calm the whole time. But up towards the end, when the whales started showing off their fucking energy, you know, the fucking space whales started showing off their energy. I was like, oh, it's about to happen. And then, you know, the the famous Star Wars line was said, may the force be with you. And, you know, a couple of tears dropped and then credits. So we're, we're, we're coming John cried like a baby back, bitch. That's what I happened. Really did. It says a couple of tears dropped. It wasn't a couple of tears. It was like a fucking waterfall. So oh, like mop out. I got a question. Do, like you, you know how like they do like the force projection and all that shit. Like and like after you die and all that. Like yada yeah. yada. Do you guys think you can like have sex with like force ghosts? God damn it, Jay. I'm just asking. Like I do. I I got an. Like it, it, it. Like it. <laughs> can you imagine having like a perv, a perv like Jedi Master, and he like project? He's like he's like he's like talking to a soaker so- like. Thir- 30 so years after he's like, choose if we had like a perp out. Jedi master, aka a congresswoman from Colorado. Yeah. And she's like, <laughs> and she's like, oh, I, 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 I see you survived the fucking collapse of the empire, huh? Fucking fuck yeah, bro. Yeah, like, I like, something. If you had to put, if, if someone was a perv <laughs> in the Jedi Council, who would be the perv? Oh, dude. Yoda. You said Yoda? Yoda. Yoda would be he'd be the pick for like the dirty old man, maybe. I was but gonna like say, I was gonna say Qui-Gon. Yeah, I was gonna, there's always a creeper. Yeah. There's there's always like the quiet cre- who was the fucking dude with the, the, the cone head, the cone head looking motherfucker? That guy, yeah. No, that's like the closet creeper. He's that, definitely that, the fucking chomo. He looks like he looks like the fucking dude who was like a youth he was like a youth pastor at a fucking church, you know what I mean? <laughs> and he like did it for years, you know what I mean? And, and like, not just any church, one of those like fucking mega church. Like mega church, yeah, and he's just like just just <laughs> closet fucking creeper you know like fucking yeah that motherfucker you know what anybody who writes that stuff is not getting paid because i mean not not now we just don't have the writer strike oh 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 boy here we go uh, so we jay's have, about to start drinking jay's about no, to start no. drinking so i mean so on top of the writer strike more we got we got the voice actors video game strike which is about, is about to go down and their big thing is ai voices you know, because yeah. that that's that's a big fight, you know, and for voice actors, this could definitely take away their job. So that's happening, okay. folks. And then what else we got, Jay? What's coming? Oh, not coming. It started. It happened Fucking it, this week. Uh, the United Auto Workers Union uh, collectively voted to go on strike against all three major uh, U.S. car manufacturers. This is the first this is not the first UAW strike. This is the first time in history that they have gone on strike against all three manufacturers at the same time. This mm-hmm. is a fucking like across the board like people are striking and in different the manufacturers now. Uh G- it would be General Motors, General Motors, uh I, god damn it, there was I think it's Ford, it, no, it's Ford GM Motor. Ford and I forget the third one starts with an M and I didn't recognize the name. I, I think they changed the name. It's yeah, I think it's like GM Ford and and I can't remember the third one because it sounds like it got bought out and fucking like changed the name because it doesn't it didn't sound familiar to me. But yeah, like long story short, motherfuckers are going on strike. Thirteen thousand of them have walked off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's like here, here's here's the thing. You know, I, I'm, I'm getting so sick to death. Like This all start like a lot of this shit started during COVID. You started hearing these like cocksuckers complaining. Like, oh, nobody wants to work anymore. 
everybody's lazy. It's like, no, 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 motherfucker. COVID showed everybody one thing and one thing only. They can get as much fucking shit done from the house as they can fucking at their goddamn stupid cubicle uh, under under a goddamn like soul soul sucking fucking fluorescent light with a fucking corporate douchebag cocksuck of a boss. Look at us. Look at us. Dude, like I'm like, yo, fuck that shit. It's not that people don't want to work. It's not that workers are fucking lazy. It's that they're not getting fucking paid. They're not getting fucking benefits. Their jobs keep getting fucking outsourced to other countries where other people make, make, make less money for what they're doing. Okay. Fucking, they're not getting fucking profit shares. Okay. Of anything, any, any of the profits that come off the sweat of their brows and, and the labor on, on their backs. Okay. They're not getting any, anything, any residuals from any of this. Yeah. Okay. This is, this is no different than the fucking. Man. It's this is no bad. different than the actors going on strike. This is no different than voice actors going on strike. It's because they're not getting fucking paid. It ain't worth it. You know, these corporations are going so far out of their way to just dick everybody the fuck down. Since the end of the 1970s, you guys can fucking Google this shit. Since the end of the 1970s, CEO pay across the board in the United States of America has gone up over 900%. Worker pay has gone up. 12% in 40 fucking years, 12% worker pay has gone up 40 years. CEO pay over 900% higher. That's good. Fuck that. That's why motherfuckers are going on strike. You fucking douchebags. John, you got that fucking show me that CEO that said the quiet part out loud. This fucking asshole made this comment this week. This is an Australian CEO. Okay. When you get that footage, I want you guys to fucking listen to the words coming out of this guy's fucking mouth. This is how they fucking view reality. Okay. I know there's a lot of us out there. We are not, we, we don't, we don't like making like hardcore fucking political statements or take stances on this show very often. This is one of those ones where it's like, they said the quiet part out loud. This is how they view you. I don't care where you fall on the political spectrum. If you are a worker, if you're a worker, this is how they view you. This is exactly like you are, le you are less than nothing to them. This is how they view you. Go ahead, John. I'll shut the fuck up. Turn that up decided they didn't really want to work so much anymore. There's been a systematic change where employees feel the employer is extremely lucky to have them um, as opposed to the other way around. So it's a dynamic that has to change. We've got to kill that attitude and that has to come through hurting the economy, which is what the whole global, you know, the, the world is trying to do. The governments around the world are trying to increase unemployment. People might not be talking about it, but people are definitely laying people off and we're starting to see less arrogance in the employment market and that has to continue. That is explicitly, I think, what is going on in terms of like what Go we ahead. saw. It's over. That, so did you hear did you hear what he said? That, so he purposely yeah. said that in order for the workers to have a sense of camaraderie, they need to lose their jobs and oh not camaraderie. That they that they need they need to feel that it you know that employers want the employees to feel like the employees are lucky to have the job yeah. where right now the way it's working out is the employees and honestly that's it's horrible the people are like no this job's lucky to have me that's correct you know that is how it, it should be exactly that, that dude that, that 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 stance and that that philosophical viewpoint that's what they had during feudalism in the middle ages you fucking surf you're lucky to work on my king's farmlands. You're lucky that we give you this fucking thatch it fucking roofed house, okay, and allow you to plow our fields. You fucking surf, you lower class fuck. Oh. No, dude, that was the, that's the whole reason the enlightenment happened was that man, man mankind has a, a say in his or her own fucking outcome, okay? I am not lucky to have this job. This motherfucking job is lucky to have me, motherfucker. Like you fucking corporate cuck, you fucking cuck, dude. One thing oh. I constantly say, and and this is you know this is a coming from somebody that's salaried. So you know, if I work ten hours a week, I get the same as if I work forty. Sure, I work to live. I don't live to work. Yes, as as it should be, and and that's how it should be. Yep. But the problem is with a lot the of people don't have that choice. Is, yeah, people a lot of people don't have that choice. choice. If they there's a uh, there's a lot of jobs out there that make it hard for people to say no. And I and, get that. And you know, on this topic, not really throwing any names out there, but that's how you know certain people in management at companies I've worked for have been. 
I had a manager one time straight up tell me, you're salaried now. You work until the job's done. No, I work 40 hours and then I'm done until the following week where you get me for another 40 hours. Correct. Like that's, that's how I work. Unless if you want to getting unless overtime. You want, yeah. I was going to say, unless you want to pay me some heavy overtime, unless fucking, you're going to pay me overtime, talk. Yep. you get at max 40 hours a week out of me and then I'm done. Yep. Yep. Do you, oh, you want to, you want to know how to get a really good job out of me? Like, like, like I'll do, I'll do the absolute best I can possibly do is fucking treat me like a fucking human being. Okay. If I ask for a couple of fucking scraps off the table, just throw me the scraps when I ask for them. Okay. I'm not asking for a lot. Just throw me a little, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm not, I'm not a greedy man. You, you give me the slightest bit that you actually care. I will fucking sell you. I will sail to the moon and back for you. All right. The minute, the minute you start fucking towing that fucking corporate bullshit line and fucking him and Han, because I asked for a raise after I've fucking been there on time every day, fucking busting my ass for three months and I ask for a fucking uh, a piddly ass like dollar raise per hour, and you fucking him and haw. I'm like, oh, we can't really do it right now. Deuces, motherfucker. I got other places well, to be. I got I, I got other jobs I can go work. I ain't got fucking time for that shit, man. I, I shouldn't have to fight for fucking so, labor rights. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and that's one of the things. So like in in my field that in the area I work in, the rule of thumb in my career in my career is. You go, you work for a company for two, three years, get a little more experience, and then you move on. A, because cost of living wages are just bullshit. Oh, it's beyond um, beyond bullshit. Yeah. Let me let me put it into retrospect. This year, cost of living wage, 3%. You want to know what that is for me? That's like an extra $40 a paycheck. Right. That does, like... like you wipe your ass that with that when you go to the, when you when you step out the front door. Yeah, like that does that's that's a tank of gas. Yeah. If yeah. if if that. If. Yeah. Yeah. That's so actually a little less than a full tank. Right. So good thing I mean, you work from home. Yeah, but see that's the thing. It's like, you know, that's why that's why in my career field it's you stay at a company for 3 years then you move on because you're going to get a bigger pay increase switching jobs than you would just staying loyal to one company. It's true. Well, and, and that, that, that is exactly how the market should operate. Bad companies don't deserve to stay in fucking business. Okay. Every time I see one of these like little hit pieces, whether it's like local here in Kansas city or across, you know, like the, the States, Oh, local, local, you know, beloved fucking restaurant shuts down or whatever after 30 fucking years. It never fucking fails almost every time when I see like the owners of these places fucking start talking like, yeah, it's just like people stop wanting to work and everybody got robble, robble and lazy. And it's like, oh, oh, no, 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 dude. Let me guess. You wanted to pay everybody fucking minimum wage, fucking like no benefits. Okay. You're cutting hours if they, if they, if they come too close to 40. So you don't have to pay them for fucking full time. Fuck you. Your business deserved to fucking fail. And what we need to do is stop fucking making the small mom and pop businesses fail. We need to make these goddamn corporations fucking fail. Like we need to start cutting jobs. With these fucking CEOs and these fucking like staff managers that think like a mother nature commercial on Apple is going to be a good fucking idea. Like how much money yeah. do you think those assholes made that came up with that stupid fucking idea? Like, like how brain, how brain damaged. Yeah. Are they? And you know, yeah. those motherfuckers are pulling like fucking half a fucking million dollars a year for fucking like pulling bullshit like that out of their asses. Yep. What about the people that are like actually making the money, actually doing the work, you know, mm -hmm. the, 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 the sweat of their brow. Okay. Car carrying the whole company on their back. Their backs are sore because they're carrying the whole fucking company on it. And while, while the fucking, the big wig is up in the fucking break room, fucking jerking himself off with Lauren Boebert and smoking a cigar. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> what the fuck is actually, actually going on right now in our country, dude. Sorry. No, it's okay. Well, going around the world, we have, um, so, this happened in Mexico. I'm going to show you the footage. Let's see. What do we got? Oh, God. Oh, this fucking bullshit. God damn. <laughs> ah. By Trans the way, just so, anybody, just, so, just so anybody isn't confused, like, this fucking bullshit was debunked in, like, 2021, and Mexico fucking, like, displayed it this week, because apparently it's cool for the government to acknowledge UFOs now or something? Uh, actually, actually, the government did not acknowledge this. Who was it? 
He was a, so he is a UFO. He was a UFO enthusiast. Um, so he, in the translation, he says, this is the first time extra, extraterrestrial life is presented in such a form that I think there was a clear demonstration that we were dealing with non-human specimens that are not related to any other species in the world. But to add on to this, months after a House Oversight Subcommittee held hearings on UAP, the Mexico Congress held a similar meeting. Only in the latter, two alleged bodies of aliens were presented to those in attendance. Now, a new report is saying that the stunt may have been criminal, given Jamie Musan, the journalist and UFOologist behind the reveal, was under oath when the presentation took place. Dude, that shit, that, the shit he presented was literally debunked two years ago. Yeah, but but to clear up the, the, gov, the, the Mexican government. Yeah, yeah, no, no, because I know there was there was a confusion with that. You're right. You're right. And I and I added to that. That's you're right. It was it was a presentation to Congress. I, I, yeah. I apologize. That was my that was my. No, no, but you're not wrong, because the original articles were saying that it was the Congress that presented it when later. on. Yeah, because the original that's what I were saying that. Yeah, it was, the, it was for, very confusing. For any for anyone familiar enough with the show, um, if if you wonder where I get a lot of my my information, my news, um, I peruse I peruse the internet pretty much all day. I just I, I'm I'm like a newspaper fucking fiend, except it's the internet age now. So like I oftentimes get news. I got that Lauren Bobert fucking news like the day it happened, like the night the night that it happened. Yeah. Be before they before they knew any sweater puppy fondling or you know handies were being given out. When I when I read the first article about it, it was that she had flicked off the security on the way out. Yeah, like it, like I got this shit like within hours of it happening, and it's like so I, I I'm I'm yeah. not a, I'm not a fucking paparazzi, okay? But I just I pay oh, attention yeah, yeah. To, I pay attention to news all day every day basically. So, uh, yeah, but, but, we did, but yeah, I did get the confirmation mm -hmm. here. Uh, the aliens were revealed by a UFO enthusiast and were presented to the Congress, but no politicians or representatives of Congress had any involvement in verifying these aliens, as per report. So it, it's confirmed that it was report that someone did fuck up and say, "Oh yeah, no, it was the government. It was the co it was Mexican Congress." Uh, yeah. But good, but people good getting things clicked. That, so what good things that are happening over in Mexico is the Mexican Independence Day, which uh, was that was yes, it was actually yesterday. It was yesterday. Okay, it was yesterday. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's September sixteenth is is the is it is Mexico's Independence Day. So, viva Mexico for 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 all for all of our listeners. Okay, and. Uh, we fucking love you guys down south, dude. You're our neighbors. Fucking, I grew up fucking 60 miles away, and uh, I, I will always treasure in my heart a lot of special memories and special people uh, from from our from our sister country. So I'm okay. I'm okay with you guys crossing the border. Let's party, bro. Fucking Mexico is the shit, and it it it, dude, it, it breaks my heart like how how bad shit got down there after the drug war kicked off in 06. Yeah. Because like for for all of it for all of the the downsides that you might see in mexico with with poverty and you know uh uh you know uh, um a disparity in wealth and stuff like that it is a fucking gorgeous country gorgeous people beautiful culture okay like isn't it rich. interesting how the how the histories are a bit reminiscent of it's ours and mexico's and it's and it's rich yeah. it's very rich it has a very rich history very very rich history and and it's it's beautiful and it's a beautiful country and i i encourage I encourage people to uh, to do some uh, do do some of their own research on their own time. We we hope everybody's fucking was had a very safe Independence Day down there. Fucking hope you partied your fucking dick dicks and pussies off. All right, so fucking keep them hard and keep them wet, dude. Like we love you guys. Fucking viva Mexico. Fucking that's what I'm talking oh, yeah. about. Dude. And so the final news thing that we do have, uh, you could pretty much take the wing on this. Jay was the, the submarine getting blown up. Yeah, dude. holy shit. <laughs> so yeah, is there footage that you could send me? Is there I I, I, gave, I, did, I got I it. Did. I got it pulled oh, up. Sweet, sweet. I got I, I gave Joe three and then so this 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 strike occurred in Crimea. Okay, so this actually happened in Crimea and occupied Crimea. The strike was on a dry dock, which is a a navy facility uh that works on ships basically and submarines. Okay, that's a it's a dry dock. The submarine was in dry dock being worked on. This is one of the Russia's newest Joe's submarines. Very expensive for them, right? Okay. Ukraine does not have a Navy, but they definitely got storm shadow missiles from fucking Britain. Okay. They, and, and they confirmed that they use storm shadow missiles from a bomber. Okay. Like, so Ukraine actually flew a very risky mission with a bomber used fucking 
bombs made in fucking the United Kingdom, our fucking cousins from our cousins from across the pond. All right. And they took out a fucking Russian submarine. A country with no Navy has now just fucked up Russia's Navy. Like they're, they're, they're scaring Russia now. Like they're scaring. All right. They're going to, they're going to retake Crimea, dude. Like they're, they're boom. (laughs) It's if you, if you can turn the sound on, if you want to hear it. And there's a couple of different, um, there's a couple of different, uh, there's another one, Joe, I think the last one I sent is probably the closest view. And if you want to turn the sound on, go ahead. This was the last one that you sent. Um, Give me one but yeah, second here. There's there's several videos of it. It, it happened. It occurred at night, you know, which makes sense that they're you know because they they use an actual bomber. You know, they used a, an airplane. They didn't want to get their fucking shit shot down. So like, makes sense that it happened at night. But that is that is a fucking Russian submarine getting. Oh, and they fucked up the dry dock too, which that's like that's you fuck up. That's that's infrastructure. That's like yeah. now they can't work on their fucking ships. At least not at that particular dry dock, right? So yeah, that's freaking like. Woo! Just wait till the ba- wait till the boom hits. <gasps> yeah, dude. Yeah, That's cool, dude. dude. That's war. Hey, fucking Slavia yeah. Ukraine, man. Fuck Russia, dude. Like y'all got y'all y'all have had it coming for a hot minute. It's still coming. Oh, yeah. Just wait. Just fucking wait, dude. They got they they got more to come. All right, you asshole. You assholes, stay put. And just wait, because the the Ukrainian army is going to fucking be right behind. So we'll see y'all fucking soon. Well, shit, man. I mean, it's been very exciting today. There was a lot. I mean, the news news was crazy. Um, Let me see if there's any breaking news. You might as well, because I was going to say, dude, because it was like every other day this week, like some weird shit came out. And it was just like, I I don't even know what to say. You know what I mean? Like, I... How, how, why would I even bother talking about my week or like, uh, trying to do, trying to like shove a roadhouse in here? Uh, and like, got, like the, the world was so fucking insane this week. You know, like they're like, like, yeah, we could, actually, we, go ahead. Sorry. I actually got something funny that we could, that we could kind of laugh about, uh, corporations and stuff like that. <laughs> so the rock and Oprah got in trouble for something like something with the wildfires in Maui. Yes. And that I think from what I'm understanding, the rock, donated a bunch of money and oprah kept all of it so the rock came back the other day on in wwe television for the first time in fucking years and people are saying (laughs) it's because he's broke and that he really fucked up and he needs to get back into people's graces which is real funny because every time he fucks he fucks up and tries to get back into people's graces he's back on wwe tv well you know what there's a parallel to that did you see like drew barrymore was going to fucking start her show again. Like while people were still striking. I saw that. And then she, and then she just announced like, if it was like, I don't know if it was last night or yesterday, she just announced she's not going to do it. And it's like yeah. people, dude, celebrities are not as rich as you think they are. Like Oprah, Oprah, Oprah yeah, is yeah. Oprah, Oprah is, but people that you see in movies, people that are in bands. Okay. Athletes, all these like big wigs that you think have like, just mega bucks and cash fucking sitting around their house. A lot of them don't. Okay. And that's why you see them pawning off fucking, Look you know, at, like, um, whoring, whoring themselves out. Like Lady Gaga does a drug commercial now for a fucking a ph- pharmaceutical drug. Lady yeah. Gaga, girl, what the fuck, man? You're, you're whoring yourself out for a fucking corporation. What the fuck? How, how broke are you? How yeah. broke are you? Like, bro. I have to agree. Uh, let me see what else we got. Sergeant sentenced to 25 years in prison for fatal shooting. Still in army four months after. You guys know anything about this? Didn't hear about uh, it. Uh, what fort? Uh, I'll tell you right now. Uh, a sergeant who was sentenced in May to 25 years in prison for fatally shooting a Black Lives Matter protester in Texas is still in the army. Holy shit. At- Daniel Perry fatally shot Garrett Foster during an Austin protest in July 2020. The law firm representing Perry told Military.com it is aiming to keep him in the Army pending a military separation board decision or a pardon from a Texas governor, Greg Abbott. What? This, oh. just, this has wrong, like, just all fucking oh. over it, dude. Oh, it gets, it gets more interesting. Garrett, an Air Force veteran who was carrying an AK-47 rifle was protesting the Minneapolis police killing of George Floyd when Perry shot him with a handgun. And both Perry and Foster are white and were legally carrying their weapons at the time of the shooting. 
Sergeant Perry's current duty status is in civilian confinement and is pending separation from the Army. Oh, that's just paperwork. So he's going. He's going to be yeah. gone. It's like, he's not still in the Army, okay? that's like, I think that's some clickbait shit. He, he ain't still in the Army. They're just fucking processing his ass out. Like, they, yep. wait, they waited until they got a fucking verdict. He's going to go to jail. And then when he's done with fucking civilian jail, if the Army wants to be fucking big enough dick to him, They'll send him fucking eleven worth of service time after civilian jail. That's how that shit. That's how that shit works. Just so you guys know, oh, like he, he's yep. not still in the army. He's on his fucking way out, like yeah. right fucking now. Army yeah. temporarily suspends reenlistment bonuses for soldiers after oh. hitting high retention rates. I saw that. Gee, guys, how come retention rates are high all of a sudden? I know why. Because there ain't no fucking job market. Because everybody's on fucking strike. Because you fucking cocksuckers don't pay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, uh, this past April, the Army, hit its, the Army hit its retention goal for the fourth year in a row. It's ret- it's has retained yeah. thousand. Makes Jay fucking sad. <laughs> Everybody's uh, on fucking strike because companies uh, don't want to pay. Oh, uh, here we go. Staying in the public. fucking Army. You have your your salaried. You you're guaranteed fucking leave. You're guaranteed fucking like a lot of stuff that mo- benefits we're, medical. We were talking family. about it earlier, Jay. I mean, shit, the Army is one of the only companies you can take 30 days off and still get fucking paid. <laughs> that, th- th- 120 this is, days, too. This is a perfect example. Perfect example of giving your employees incentive to stay with your motherfucking company. Pay them. Give them incentives uh, like fucking uh, time off and benefits. Right. Uh, next one, we have the Air Force wants you to play video games in the name of national security. <laughs> okay. Uh, the MI- MITRI, a, na- a, non-prof- a non-profit national security company whose open registration for its esports tournament, GameX Mission Generation Under Attack, a collaboration with the Air Force to help serve <laughs> service better understanding mission lo- logistic choices and prioritization while under attack. Participants in the esports tournament will play the game Drone Guardians, a mix of first-person shooter strategy and puzzle games that requires teams of five to defend the deployed location while still launching a fighter aircraft mission. We're going to have to have a talk offline of what I think this might be, but I'm not going to say it in fucking public. Dude. <laughs> like, uh, it's I, 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 have an, I have an idea like why they might be doing this, and like that's it makes perfect fucking sense, actually, but it's... yeah. So in 1993, the Army used the Super Nintendo specially designed to gauge a soldier marksmanship called the Multipurpose Arcade Combat Simulator, or shorter, Max. If, if this is kind of it, it's it, it's in the it's in, it, you're in the ballpark. It's in the, it, yep, yep, it's in the ballpark. Uh, yep, it featured yep. targets used on, the, on any military range while teaching soldiers to zero their weapon. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. We're, we, I'm I'm still you know all all, all three of us by far have our fucking dd 214s but opsec is definitely still a thing and like although we are not endorsed nor do we endorse uh you know anything within the dod or the u.s government as a whole right now because we don't work for them anymore um i i ain't fucking i ain't saying shit i i, I kind of i have an idea exactly why they're doing that and that's i i think it's smart i think it's very smart i think it's smart to integrate uh skills that are already pre 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 fucking learned in the in the Soldiers, Marines, Airmen, Sailors, uh, Coasties, our fucking Guardians in the Space Force. You know, sub- submarines use fucking uh, Xbox controllers now for the Periscope. You know why? Because they discovered fucking it was like a thousand times easier to fucking teach somebody how to operate a Periscope. If they already knew how to fucking use a control. Common sense. They did it. Like, yep. that's that's the military. Common sense. So it's like, sometimes, sometimes, believe it or not, soldiers common sense actually wins out the only so. time it's a bad idea to use the game controller to control anything on a submarine is when it's a civilian operated submarine and the whole fucking machine is being operated by a 30 dollar fucking logitech and, controller and so i have the final news <laughs> this is actually this is this is probably going to trigger some people but the like u.s Jay? the u.s government has warned a virginia judge that allowing an american marine to keep an afghan war orphan risk violating international law and could be viewed around the world as enforcing an act of international child abduction, according to secret court records reviewed by the Associated Press. I need to hear the story. I, I, I remember reading the article and I, there was a, there was some, there was some disparity over what, 
what happened originally, I believe, and what is happening now. And, and, and I don't know which party is actually at fault. Also, I have a question. Are they trying to like separate this fucking war orphan and send them back to Afghanistan? Because that would like if, if the family of this if the family of this war orphan that wants the kid back is not in Afghanistan, I'd probably be a lot more inclined to say like, yeah, the Marine probably fucked up a little bit. If that family is still in Afghanistan, um, I don't know why the fuck anybody would fucking leave that any, child there. Send anybody back to that country, like yeah. for any reason right now. Like so, like yeah, I might have like so. Yeah. What what is it saying? So apparently the baby was taken from them. Okay. And they're in twenty twenty two they were suing to get her back. But now the government is saying it must be undone. But failing to return the child now four years old to Afghan relatives in the US could jeopardize American efforts to resettle Afghan refugees in the future. Threaten international security packs and might be used as propaganda by Islamic extremists. Okay, so there it is. The, yeah. the the relatives li- the rel- th- that that baby has relatives living in the United States. Yeah. A de- a devil dog. Sorry, dude. Tough shit. Like, you got to give that baby to the family. You got to give that baby back to their family. Yeah. They're like tough fucking shit, devil dog. Like, give it up. Sorry, dude. Like, there's a, there's a, there's other ways to adopt. You can probably definitely adopt another a- 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 Afghan orphan. Like, come on, dude. I well, I'm, I'm gonna adopt. I'm oh. gonna adopt you, dude. I'm gonna adopt you and like. You guys remember like last year? Do you guys remember last year when I, I kind of like I, I, I discovered my my biological family? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. My my biological father had no idea I existed. I am I am I am uno- unofficially my biological father's oldest child. Yeah. He, he had no he had no idea I existed. Okay. Like that's it's shit like it's shit like that where that's that's not that's not okay when, when we get into topics of like adopting children, you know, babies, you know, uh, hu- human beings and life and lives that actually like, you know, like, yeah, they're, they're going to become self, they're going to become self-aware eventually. But if you don't know, you don't know. And babies don't know shit. <laughs> babies don't know shit. Like they just like, they, they, they cry and they want to be fed and they, and they dump in their pants. Okay. And they look really cute when they fucking, when they're laughing. Okay. And then they grow up and that, and it's how, it's how you raise them. But if they don't know, they don't know. And that's not fair to, anyone involved if there's actual family here in the states too that 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 child probably has a right to to know and to be raised with their family you know what i mean yep. oh. yeah, i mean it, it is saying in court filings that mass attorneys have written the have written that the marina his wife acted in good faith and worked at great personal expense and sacrifice to protect the baby and provide her a loving home i mean you know that it yeah but at the same time yeah. you know there's that baby needs that family. That baby's, that baby's family is has family in the states. Henceforth, it's that baby cool. needs to be handed over to blood relatives that live in the states because at this point the baby's no longer at yeah. harm. It, it yeah. starts turning into a conversation uh, about culture too. You know, yeah. because if that, if that baby a girl, has it's, a dance, it's a girl, right? Yes, it's a girl. It's a baby. Yeah, girl. yeah. Don't be sending a fucking girl back to Afghanistan right now. Like, no shit. You're right. It, yeah. it, it cu- culturally not really cool to be a girl in Afghanistan right now. Culturally, no. so yeah, no. it's like it's like no shit. Yeah. So, so, so it's a shame. I promise you, we'll have uh, more positive news next week. I'll find something. Well, well, actually, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and change gears here because. Uh, Captain about fucking spewed Coors Banquet out his fucking nostrils over dude, there. God damn it, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we, we've had a we, we've had a good time today. We've had a good time. It's just like it's like, well, we still have a little bit more of a good time to have though, Jay. It's fine. It's We're going fine. into week two of fucking football. We are. Week yes. one was a cluster fuck. I I don't you know you, you know everybody talks about brackets during like March take Madness and like how take the wing. How quick, how quick, how quick fucking like brackets get busted in March Madness. Yeah. Week one, week one, well, if we're going to call them brackets, brackets for fucking fantasy football, all to hell. All just, the fucking just hell. demolished. Nobody saw a week one coming. I don't know which bro. I, I don't know which, I'm watching, I don't know which game to talk about first. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and go right into fucking Dallas. Cause we already talked about Casey's game last weekend. We did. We did. That was we the did. Thursday game. So before Casey, the episode, we already press- had that one. 
Kansas City oh. gets enough press. Kansas City gets enough press on this fucking show, anyways, by virtue of me living here. Let's talk about the fucking Cowboys game. So, Let's talk I'm about going it. straight straight to that fucking game. So sitting there watching the fucking game. Here we are, you know, fucking every every part of our fucking team got points. Special teams, defense, offense, everybody got some point somewhere on that fucking game. I fu- I'm watching it halftime hits 26 and 0. I'm sitting here like, okay, so when are the Giants actually going to start playing the fucking game of football? Because this isn't even a fucking challenge for Dallas. Close that door, please. Get down Sorry. to, we get down to fucking, finally fourth quarter comes around. It's 40 and 0. There's still like 10 minutes left in the fucking game. I finally was like, okay. I, I don't even care if if the Giants were to have scored any points during that 10 minutes. I didn't need to see it. It was there garbage was time. No coming it, back. Was, it was garbage time. Okay. Yeah. The whole the, the, the whole the whole didn't show up. The whole fourth quarter was garbage time. It was like you say the last 10 minutes. Fuck the last 10 minutes, bro. Like the whole fourth quarter. You could have turned it off. The game was fucking over. The game was over at fucking halftime. They just still had a fucking second half to play. I mean, did you see the... uh, I mean, 26-0 and at half, the Giants could have came back. In theory. In theory. theory. But they did it. But they were firing the fucking team to actually show up. I was going to say, they didn't show up. They didn't like. They didn't bring anything. Did you see the... uh, What was it uh, on Monday Night Football? uh, Eagles, Eagles, uh, Vikings? Did you see Eagles, Vikings? I didn't watch Eagles, Vikings Monday night. Uh, That was... That one was an interesting one because... The Vikings basically like snatched defeat from the jaws of victory, but the disparity in first downs was a star. I think it was with the running back. It was like like first downs uh, on or r- rushing first downs. Excuse me, rushing first downs. I think the Vikings had zero, which and like for how for how kind of like close that game was, the disparity in rushing first da- first downs became the the the, the talking point. And it became like, holy shit, like they didn't even get one. They didn't get a single rushing touchdown. And that ultimately like assisted in damning them to lose that game in in, in very Vikings fashion. Like I, this yeah. is not me talking shit about the Minnesota Vikings, by the way, Vikings fans. Um, I, I, I am because because of my Kansas City history, I do take a uh, an amount of um, time out of every season to kind of keep my yeah. eye on the Vikings because we played you guys in Super Bowl four and you guys really like you haven't recaptured the Lombardi yet, which makes me feel for you guys because it was 50 years. It was 50 years for us after winning, winning the first time. So I feel for the Vikings fans and they have this like tradition of having really good teams that just find really inventive ways to lose, which used to be our reputation in the playoffs. You know what I mean? And it's like, and that's that they lost. In such, the, the, the Eagles, the Eagles played well. But the Vikings kind of like they could have won that game. They really could have won that game. And there was like these little. It was like, how how are they not winning right now, right? And it, but it's the Vikings. Oh. And <laughs> let's see. Right now we're looking at in in standings for the NFC, the East. I mean. Everybody except the Giants has won a game. Dude, AFC West, the fucking Raiders are number one right now. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking Raiders, dude, are number yeah. one right now. Like, congratu- congratulations, Vegas. Like, enjoy enjoy, enjoy one week. <laughs> enjoy one week, dude. Like, well, enjoy, enjoy being and, in first place, dude. And that's the thing. Like, I'm really looking forward to today's game for Dallas. Because who, uh, who, who, who are you guys playing? Jets. Now, oh, I was... Oh, we didn't even we didn't even talk about that part. <laughs> well, I was actually about to get into that part. Let's, That's let's why I brought it. that up. Please brought up Dallas's game today here. So, you know, I when when Rodgers got got traded to the Jets, I was really nervous for our fucking week two game with Rodgers being on the field and Dak being Dak and kind of choking sometimes under pressure. Sure, I was I was extremely nervous. Now that we're the Jets are kind of in a limbo state because they had to bring in a whole nother quarterback. 
And well, don't don't forget they they still won that game though. They still won that game. Yes, they did. So <laughs> you know there is that they still won their game they last still, week. They found a even way to though win. Rogers only lasted four fucking snaps, four, four. plays, seventy five, yeah. seventy five million dollars guaranteed. Four plays. Four plays. Four plays for the New York Jets. That has got to be the most New York Jets fucking like. Worst, the worst bro. part about it bro, is. I feel bad. The Jets I, are still losing a second round draft pick. I feel. I do, this deal. I feel bad all the way around. I, I feel bad for fucking Aaron Rodgers. I'm not a huge Aaron Rodgers fan, like in general. I feel bad. Great. All like everybody got fucking dicked down in this deal. Everybody. The Packers got dicked down. The Packers got dicked down on this deal. Like everybody, like Packers aren't getting much out of this, dude. Like they're they're now getting a second round pick instead of a first round pick. Okay, which really doesn't mean shit for them. Okay, like the Jets are fucked. They're they're, they're going to like QB two and QB three now probably for the season, guaranteed. They owe they owe they owe Aaron Rodgers fucking seventy five million dollars for showing up for four plays. This poor bastard. Aaron Rodgers is 43 years old, fucking like he's going to be recovering for like the next three fucking years from a complete fucking separation of his Achilles tendon from his fucking body, right? And I'm going to say uh, this, though, this uh, is exactly why you stretch before exercise, people. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Like, like that, better, like, bro, how are you bro. a professional athlete and in four plays you snap your Achilles? It's not, dude, you know, okay. Parallel, we'll, we'll parallel. I started playing softball this year, right? Yeah. And there's been a couple of games where, like, I can feel it a little bit more in my body. You know, it might not – just might be what I did that week, maybe what I ate the night before, if I didn't fucking stretch properly, shit like that. And you can feel it, you know, week to week. You can kind of feel like, okay, I was I, I was feeling good this week. It's hot as fuck today. I didn't drink enough water last night. You know, whatever. Yeah. Dude, I'm 42. Aaron Rodgers is only one year older than me. I'm playing slow pitch fucking softball. This dude is playing in the most elite football league, American football, I should say, the most elite American football league in the fucking world. Mm -hmm. And he's a year older than me. And it's like, bro, like at this point, I don't even fucking trust it anymore. Like I have to, I have to fucking be careful when I fart because I might accidentally shit myself. Okay. All right. I'm only 40. I got to be careful when I fart because I might pull a muscle in my back. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, um, sneezing. I get, I get, I dude, I get scared of sneezing sometimes, because like I get feel like, I sneeze and shit just fucking pops at the same time, and it's bro, like, like, what the fuck? I ain't it's trying like, to play in the, I ain't no, trying to play in the fucking I mean, NFL right now, I bro. Will, like, I will straight up say, you know, it takes a whole nother level of athlete to be 43 years old and still going out on the fucking field with these 20 something year olds playing a contact fucking sport. The only the the only uh, equivalent I can make uh, for the for the military portion of our show is this would be your 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 apex your apex delta operator who is in his fucking mid forties. Okay, this is a guy that's been in for like twenty plus years already. Probably been in fucking probably been in the in the special services the whole time or close to the whole time. Probably came out of fucking ranger bat, you know. And he's like 43, 44, 45 years old, still fucking slinging, still slinging fucking lead, but he still has to be at the peak of physical condition, physical, mental, everything condition. Yeah. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, man, I, I, that's why I feel you know, bad. And, and like, you, I, don't, you I don't think he's coming back. You started I playing. Oh, no. I don't this, think he's coming. I, he, he, ta- he talked this week about maybe going into the booth and helping them on the coaching side, which I agree with. If you're, if, if you're going to pay $75 million this motherfucker for four plays, make him do something. Ha- fucking anything, dude. Like have him fucking like, like Jesus Christ, dude. Like that's, I feel bad. I would like that for, for the franchise. They, the Jets haven't won a Super Bowl since Super Bowl three. Now, like, yeah. Now I will say, you know, like you said, you, you got back into softball. You're playing slow pitch softball. Slow pitch. I got back in like, the fucking gym. I'm not. And, I'm, uh, and yeah, there's, there's days, you know, the next day after a fucking workout in the evening. Yep. I'm sitting here fucking like crawling from the bed to my fucking office to my desk chair. Yeah. And, you know, as, as, it, and that's good. That's good, Joe. That means you're doing it right. Well, yeah, no, but at the same time, it's like, 
at the same time, like I can tell depending on the level of fucking soreness in my muscles. Yep. Whether I stretched properly before my workouts or I drank enough fucking water and stayed hydrated enough during my workout. Yep. You yep. know, like I, I, cut out i cut out drinking during the week last night like when we started this episode today i was hung over as fuck which you deserve that by the way you deserve that but but you know like because i don't drink like i used to because right. i'm going to the gym and trying to get my body back healthier i drank a 12 pack of some really strong fucking micro brews last night <laughs> thinking no i was way. in my fucking 20s <laughs> And then at two o'clock this morning, I'm fucking making a goddamn pizza, <laughs> which also isn't a smart move. You don't need to eat within fucking, you know, a couple hours before you go to bed. Um, and yeah, Jay already read me the right act on that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, yet we've got guys like fucking Rogers out there playing high contact fucking sports at 43 years old. Like at the, the most elite level, really the most shit's the gonna most. get fucked up. Shit's going to break. You're going to have problems. Patrick, Once Patrick Mahomes got, that, his, what was that? Uh, Patrick Mahomes got his knee blown out. What? Three, three seasons ago, trying to rush for a touchdown. You know what I mean? And we were goddamn, and we were goddamn lucky. We didn't well, lose I mean, last him. season. Last <laughs> season, Dak sat out for six games because he fucked up his thumb. That's what I'm saying. And it like, and it, and it happens just like that. Just like that. Like, and you'll, you'll never see it so, coming. You'll never see it coming. There's no predicting it. It's just when it happens, it happens. Like, and you get, you get to deal with the fucking but, fallout, but you know, we're going into, we're going into week two. Well, technically we've already gone into week two because of Thursday night's games. So well, and, then, you know, and actually like the, the chiefs are playing like, as we're talking right now. Well, like, yeah. I mean, technically the first round of games has already started for today. So, you know, we're in week two. Now we've got, you know, the Chiefs playing the Jags right now. Um yeah, I was gonna say who who else who else do we got? Let me let me look up the fucking NFL schedule today. I'm I, I, let, let's let's go let's go real quick over um some some matchups to take it to keep an eye on and then we'll uh, maybe we'll close out after that. How about that? Yeah. Now Ravens Ravens Bengals, okay. Um let's see here. The Raiders are playing the Bills. So that'll be interesting for the for AFC West fans. So we got Raiders Niners are playing the Rams, Hawks, Lions, Colts, Texans, yep. Bears, and the Buccaneers, Chiefs, Jags, Chargers, and Titans. These are the games that are actively yep. on right now: Packers, Browns. Falcons, Raiders, Bills. Got the uh, Browns and the Steelers on Monday Night Football tomorrow. That's the Browns and the Steelers. So no, oh, we've man. actually got two Monday night games. Yeah, we tomorrow. do. We've yeah, got Panthers. Shit. We've got and the, the Panthers and the Saints and yeah. the Browns and the Steelers tomorrow. Yep. Uh, this oh. afternoon we've got Giants and Cardinals and Cowboys and Jets. And tonight, Sunday uh, night football. Sunday night football is Dolphins Patriots. So that's always a fun mm -hmm. one. Keep keep an eye on that. That's always that's a rivalry game. So we've got that's a good one, game. That'll be three, tonight. Four. Will be a good game. We've got four four o'clock games. So we got 49ers and Rams, Giants and Cardinals, Cowboys and the Jets, and the Commanders and Broncos. Um, out of the four o'clock games, I would definitely say, oh shit, Cowboys and Jets. I, I'm, you know, might think I'm a little biased, but that's going to be a game to definitely keep an eye on. Um, especially after last week coming out of week one with what the Jets faced and what the Cowboys did to the non-existent New York team that we already played. Um, <laughs> the Jack, the Jaguars just held the Chiefs scoreless in the first quarter. So it, yeah, it, the so, game, game, game is score game is scoreless after one. So that's fucking yeah. And right now we're looking we at go. week two. Seven, holy no, shit! Ravens Bengals uh, seven and seven for the uh, Seahawks Lions game right now. So. You know, they're tied up in quarter two. Uh, Colts, Texans, 14 to seven. Colts in the lead. So the only scoreless game going in Q2 right now is uh, Chiefs, Jags. going into Q2 is Chiefs and Jags. Yeah. So here we here we go. R roll out the lazy, crazy fucking days of fucking football, dude, because here we, here we fucking go. Like, so... This afternoon, I'm going to say definitely keep an eye on the Giants-Cardinals game and the Cowboys and Jets just because I want 
I'm going to keep an eye on the Giants game because I want to see if they actually fucking show up this week or if the Cardinals get a fucking cakewalk like we did. That's good. That is oh. probably that. That is a good. That's a good question to ask. Actually, I I I, I was shocked. I was shocked at the the Dallas New York game. You know, I, I was not surprised that Minnesota kind of like tripped over their own dicks. That kind of is that's very Vikings of them, you know. Yeah, and but, the thing is, the thing yeah, is, the Giants Cardinals game, both the teams Giants were in there with coming off of losses. So. The Giant, the Giants weren't supposed to be that bad this year. Like no, no. nobody, nobody's expecting them to win the Super Bowl, but they're not supposed to be that bad this it, year. This was not supposed to be a year that they at least fucking made it. You know. They're, 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 playoffs, they're supposed, second round of the playoffs. They're supposed to be on the come up. They're supposed to be on the come up this year, and that performance was uh, that wasn't the come up this year. Fucking performance last week, extremely <laughs> less, less than lack, le, less than lackluster. Joe, I need you to fill about thirty to forty-five seconds. I gotta freaking use the restroom. Maybe we'll hit the uh, the final thought. What do you say? Well, it's about yeah. that time. It's about that time. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll be right back. Yeah, I mean, look, right. there's um, if you guys are because we, we're all Apple fans here, right? So just to finish up the, right before we get to the final thought, uh, for all mankind is coming out November eighteenth, I think it is. They just released yeah. a teaser trailer, and the teaser trailer is a recruitment video for Helios. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then also, since you know you bring Apple back up, everybody yeah. with. Uh, Apple devices, iPhones, wa- Apple watches. Tomorrow, iOS 17 and Watch OS 10 right. officially launch. So, if you're on the beta software, go ahead and make sure your updates, are, your beta updates, are turned off so you can get yep. the official release of the software. If you're not on the beta software, make sure automatic updates are on. There is a lot of really good improvements in this next software coming out tomorrow. So, you know, there is that also. Yeah, I'm actually thinking too. That maybe because you know next week we're not going to be live. Uh, we're going to be a pre-recorded episode. And yep, I'll be celebrating my anniversary with my wife. That that so we won't you know we won't be doing it Monday. We'll be doing it Friday. Um, what I oh, what did I want to add in about this? Oh, I was actually thinking maybe not next week's episode, but the week after, we do an all football episode. It'll give me a chance to stay to stay behind the booth, and I'll get Crazy Ace TV on. Okay, we, hey, that's yeah. Not, I was, you know what? I, I I meant to bring up to you guys like it's been a minute since we've had a guest. You know, like why not? Maybe and that the we'll, we'll already we'll already have uh, first well, three three weeks of football down. Well, the first three weeks of football down. Yep, which gives us a very early indi- yeah. early indicator because of, uh, which which direction the season's going. You know because what I mean? So with us with us doing a pre-record for next episode, we won't talk football next episode because we won't. We'll, well, we well, might we talk on some of the highlights from week two. Yeah. Uh, so the episode but, after will be a football centric episode. We, we can have to go full full fucking football for a whole episode. Yeah, good. You know. Me, Jay, we get crazy ace in here because I know he's he's the he's definitely the lone wolf of the crew because he's a Bears fan. So. That's all right. I, hey, man, like I'm, I'm all about, I'm all about, like, I get, I do, I get it. I, I, I passionately uh, empathize with fans of certain franchises because until the Chiefs got Mahomes, like, I was right fucking there with you guys. I was right fucking so, there with you guys. Like, and like, like, yeah, we, we have, we have the NFL's golden boy right now. It ain't going to last forever. I'm just fucking, I'm just riding the wave right now. I'm yeah, just riding I, the wave. I, I'll prepare a trivia for that. I'll prepare a trivia game for that episode. Don't make don't make the questions too hard, John. Remember, we've had we've had problems with this before. Like, do not don't don't you ask really me about don't, the non football fan. The, yeah, the non yeah, don't, don't ask me about to make a trivia game, bro. Because don't ask me about come up with some bullshit questions like who was the first commissioner of the NFL? Yeah, and I, it's I, like what the fuck. Who was the Miami Dolphins tight end in 1978? Who broke a fucking NFL? And you're like, wait, what? Like, I, I, I no, I got, no. I <laughs> I'll, make, I'll make sure that they are in the realm of comedy imagine, knowledge. Im, Im, I was gonna say, imagine like, imagine doing a trivia game for a fifth grader. Okay, that's like, that's that's my brain right okay. now. Fifth grader. Okay, okay like, then, then shit, man. we're gonna we're gonna actually dumb it down a little bit and go third grade for Jay. I'm more the fifth grader. Um, <laughs> we're talking about responsibility. He's probably right. 
Okay. <laughs> crazy yeah, Ace. Hey. Crazy Ace. I'm pretty sure will probably be like more middle school era, the junior high school section. Um. So. <laughs> yeah, I'll write. I will write to him. I'll write to him this week. But yeah, sure. uh, Joe, kick it off with that final so, today, man. So you know, we we've, we've made it through another week. There's there's been. Uh, you know, we all face our own challenges, trials, tribulations, issues in life. We we try to do this and put on a good show for everybody so they have something to look forward to every 168. If you're feeling down, sad, depressed, need to talk to somebody, you can text STAR 988 or you can call 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK for the National Suicide Hotline. If you don't want to talk to a stranger, you can reach out to a friend. Reach out to your battle buddy. There's somebody out there you can reach out to. And if you're not personally like feeling down and upset, reach out to people you care about. Reach out to your friends. Just touch base, even if it's somebody you haven't talked to in a while. Because who knows, your text message or phone call to a friend could be what saves a life. We want to see everybody back every week. We want to keep doing this for y'all. We want to keep doing this to keep our own mental sanity. Even though sometimes when you're tuning in, you probably think what mental sanity, they're all a bunch of fucking crazy lunatics. <laughs> but, you know, we love every one of our viewers, listeners, those of y'all that have supported us since day one, those of y'all that have supported Jay and John, Jay and John and myself, once I got brought into the fold, you know, we, we appreciate it and we don't want anyone making any rash decisions. So just reach out if you feel a need to talk. My ears are always open. Also, you can reach me through Discord. Um, We've said it many so. times. I, I will hand out my personal fucking phone number. If it's that bad and it's that urgent, like I will fucking give you my personal phone number. Call me. Like yeah. I am not a licensed behavioral health specialist, but I will no. fucking, t I will talk to you if you need somebody to fucking talk to in no okay. way, shape or form. But at the same time, if you need that ear, just a vent. Cause you know, life's kicking you in the fucking McNuggets. We we do we do with our own fucking battle brothers and sisters. Like, why not why not do it with strangers every once in a while if it fucking if it's that important? Like we lose we lose exactly. too many. I, I'm getting sick. And it's it's not just people that I know. It's like my battle brothers and my battle sisters, I see their Facebook feeds too. And you know, by virtue of being in different units around the army, I see their feeds when they lose people. You know what I mean? So it's not mm -hmm. just when 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 the three of us lose somebody that we know or or knew or whatever we see everybody else around us losing people too and yep. and it's um, life is depressing enough right like on its own we don't need and we can we can worth, fix this. like yeah, life, we, life is worth we living wanted, we want to do everything we can humanly possibly humanly possibly Absolutely. do to try to cut back that number try to change the statistics so just reach out that's all we can ask Absolutely. reach out and be back in 168 everybody fucking a fucking a yep so. we'll see you we'll see you next week everybody have fun have a good week the fall's here watch them leaves change it's happening in missouri it's happening in missouri so we'll see you on 168 you guys be good this week nothing good's happening yep. nothing good happens after dark all right <laughs>